Since digitizing usually starts with artwork, and artwork comes in lots of different file types, I thought I'd take a minute to explain a few of those file types to you. Artwork files usually start um, in either vector or raster artwork. Let's take a minute and look at the raster artwork first. So I'm going to open an example of a raster file. I click on File and Open, or I can just click on the Open icon. I'm going to use a file that is located on local disk C. In the Designs folder, that folder is loaded with your Design Shop software. I'm going to go into Graphics. I need to change my files of type to all graphics to see those graphic files. And the one that I'm going to pull up first is chilipepper.bmp. Now, a BMP file is a raster artwork file. Raster artwork is a grid-based artwork. It's basically little squares of color. And as I zoom in, or if I were to enlarge this file, you would notice that it pixelates, or I get kind of jagged square edges. Now, depending on the resolution or how many sample squares of color there are per inch, you will see this pixelation more or less at different zoom levels. The higher the resolution, the cleaner your artwork is going to be, and the cleaner the artwork is, the easier time you're going to have digitizing it. Sources for these raster files would include scanners or digital cameras or image editing software. File type examples would include, let's get, a, get an example up here for you, um, BMP files, those are going to be bitmap files. You might also find JPEG files. Now Design Shop does require a three-letter extension, so make sure it's a JPG extension. We've got PCX files, TIFF files, and PNG files. And PNG files also have a transparent background, so you may not notice this white square around your design. The other type of files that we may be dealing with are vector files. If your design shop has vector capabilities, then you can utilize vector files. And those would include EPS or WMF, those are going to be the most common. Let me open an example of one of those. So in that graphics folder, we have an example of a vector file. Coffee, uh, coffee cup EPS, that's going to be an encapsulated postscript. And usually those are vector, although they can contain raster elements. Let me clear off the wording. Let's take a look at the difference in the vector file. If I zoom in really, really closely here, you can see that my edges are still nice and clean, completely crisp. The other nice thing about a vector file is in the raster file, I have just one element, and that is the bitmap file itself. When I look at the vector file, I actually have a vector list, which means I can expand this out and see all of these individual elements. If I have these elements, half of the time digitizing is spent tracing around my elements. If they're already here, all I really need to do is grab my editing tools and begin inputting what I want. So I may want to start here, stop here, and I might have this stitch direction. And now, using a lot of the auto stitch types and auto underlays, auto densities, those types of things, I've already turned this part of the coffee cup into stitches. So vector is a much faster way to convert your um, artwork into stitches. Let me delete this for just a minute. Um, sources for your vector files would be illustration programs. Um, you might find them again as EPS or WMF. Those are going to be the most common ones that you're going to find. So those are the two basic types of artwork files that you're going to be running across and the different file extensions that you'll see.